Hi, this is Roger. All together now. Thanks for dropping by. <laughs> I can hear you. Um, something a bit different. Um, I need to water the Phalaenopsis, which are out in the kitchen. Well, I don't take the plants to the water. I bring the water to the plants. That way we've only got one thing to transport. And then I water them here in the kitchen. I just sort of clear this deck off a bit because um, it's going to get some drips and things on. And then I've still, same method, I've still got my watering bowl. That's got feed in this time because it got flushed last time. And um, I still water them the same way. So we'll still get the uh, boinging noise. So be it. <laughs> and then um, we'll have a look at them as we go. Uh, I might have to play with the light because obviously I'm, I've turned the actual light on to sort of get a bit of brightness here, but it's not very bright light in the kitchen. And the light's coming in from the window, which means everything's being lit from the wrong side. I might play with that as I edit the video. Anyway, let's have a look and see what we've got. Right, first one, this is one of Hannah's. And this is... Now actually it just says Phalaenopsis. This might actually be my one. The sort of um, yellow one. Oh, I can't remember. Anyway, <laughs> as far as a, a, a Phalaenopsis goes, we've got a nice pot full of roots here. Um, all of the Phalaenopsis haven't long been repotted. Um, it's got some aerial roots, but uh, most of them have gone down in the pot. And we've got a nice spike. And you notice the shape of the spike. That's what directional light can do for your uh, spikes. So uh, what we've effectively got here um, was a giant mealy bug, which I've just dealt with. with. Another couple there as well. To keep my eye on them in the kitchen, because I don't look at these plants, even though they're under my nose, I don't look at them that detailed. Any on the leaves? Nope. Anyway, back to directional light. The spike headed off in this direction. Yeah? Now you have to do this before the buds set. Otherwise you'll mess up the, the aspect of your actual blooms. So what I do is um, I let the spike extend. And then when it gets so far, pointing at the light, I turn it the other way. So it's now pointing away from the light and it automatically twists round to point to the light again. So it puts like a bend in it, which means when these blooms open, they'll be above the plant, not right over here, making the plant lopsided. So that's what you can do if you have access to directional light. You can bend your spikes round. Now if you do it too early, it doesn't have necessarily the desired effect. But um, if you time it right, you can uh, get your spike to go over like that. So that's the first one. And then all I do is uh, water them as normal. All water through. They're all in bark. So I can pour as much water as I like through these pots. And they will head towards dryness in a few days' time. So they never stay wet too long. And then when I've watered them, I just plump them down, out of the way, on to the next one. Mm -hmm. So I have to go careful not to knock that big one, because I'm frightened it's going to keel over. Um, another one with a spike. This is one of Hannah's, definitely, because it's got a proper label in it. And this is U-Pin Easter Island, it says on the tag. Now we got... So there's not a mealy bug in sight on this one. So just a couple on that. One spike, nothing on the leaves. Yep, good. And again, as a plant, we've got a nice pot full of roots here. Nice pot full of roots there in bark, so you know, can stay in there for a nice long time. And again, I've done the same thing with the spike. I let the spike extend so far out here and then turned it round. And I'm even adapting the buds at the moment because. They are, this is where the light comes from, like where the camera is now. So it would be nice if all the blooms pointed that way. So this one that was pointing this way, 
I very gently bent over the top of the spike so it will open that side of the spike. So I'll have as many buds as possible pointing this way. Unfortunately that means the branches are also doing the same thing so it's going to get a bit cluttered in this area. A nice mass of blooms to look at anyway. <laughs> Some people worry about making sure they water the aerial roots. Um, I don't bother, quite honestly, I don't bother. And on large plants like this, I'm pouring water into the pot, I'm not getting any water near the crown of the plant, so I don't have to worry about that sort of thing. Oops, I'm knocking my buds here, let's move that out a bit. Right, next one. Oh, how boring, no spike. <laughs> oh, there it is, there's one just starting that I hadn't noticed. And this is another one of Hannah's, this is Happy Hour. Um, as a plant, again, lovely pot full of roots. Can't really go wrong with a pot full of roots like that. And with it, with it being in bark that's relatively new, it can carry on filling that pot with roots for a couple of years yet. Very badly distorted leaf here, that was me. I've explained how I did that. There were mealy bugs down in the crown and I hooked them out with a pair of scissors. And because the leaf was in its embryo state, it was tiny, it damaged the leaf. So it's grown with that physical damage on it. The next two leaves are fine. Got a nice new leaf coming here. And, although I said one without a spike, if you look carefully there, the end of my finger, there is a spike just starting. So I presume it's a spike anyway. Looks a bit too high up for a root, so I'm going to say it's a spike. And one way or the other, we will find out when it grows. So, <laughs> again, I don't worry about whether it's a root or a spike. It will, it will eventually make itself known. first three actually in spike and then the next one this is definitely one of mine because it doesn't look anywhere near as good as the others but it's a recovering fowl um, and as a recovery it's doing very well with the roots um, the plant itself hasn't got many leaves but it's not dropping any so it is increasing its leaf mass a nice new leaf coming here so uh, it's doing okay. Now when you've got roots outside the pot like that, I make sure I water those. I pour water down the outside of the pot. So, you know, they get some water. Um, as well as the inside of the pot, obviously. So, uh, I'll make sure they get some too. And if I've got aerial roots over the top of the pot, by pouring water into the pot, I'm actually watering those aerial roots as well. But I don't make a big deal heading off into space to do aerial roots um, when it's not convenient. If they're above the centre of the pot, they get watered anyway. Right, so now we're on to the smaller stuff. Again, one of Hannah's. Uh, close inspection of the spike for mealy bugs. I think that big mealy bug and one little one was all there is. I haven't found any others yet. So this is the um, pyloric form of the equestrius. Um, second bloom, we had a look at this a while back. Second bloom's now opened and the second spike is progressing quite, quite nicely. Um, I wouldn't say this has got a pot full of roots but it has some growing roots and it has enough to support this plant. So, I'm, you know, it's okay. Um, and being a species, perhaps they, you know, I don't know much about Balanoxes, so I haven't grown them prolifically. 
They used to only have phalaenopsis if you go back far enough. But in those days, they were just treated as house plants. They, they, you know, I didn't sort of think of them as something special. They were just a type of house plant that had nice blooms that lasted a long time. And then we've got this one. This is Hannah's. Um, so the, <laughs> the roots have gone down the outside of the pot and are starting to stick to the bottom of the black pot now. I wish those two had gone down inside the pot. I really do. Um, this hasn't got a lot of roots inside the pot. It's got some, and some are actively growing that are relatively new to get down into the pot. I've um, got these two massive ones down the outside of the pot. Um, but this has got lovely variegated leaves that might not show up that well. But um, nice patterning on the leaves. Not variegated, spotty, speckled. <laughs> not plain. Yeah, it, it's okay. This one was in a sorry state when it was um, potted up a while back. It, uh, it really looked sorry for itself and I was worried that it wasn't going to recover, but it seems to have recovered. I can remember when Hannah got this, it was a very long time ago, which meant it spent quite a long time at Hannah's where it would have been progressively going downhill because of her temperature. Because of the way she works, she works from four o'clock in the morning till lunchtime. So obviously when she gets up at that time of day, there's no point in heating up her flat. She just puts up with the cold. She's got a separate heater in her bathroom, which has no windows, um, but she doesn't bother heating the flat. So she does, there's no heating in that flat until she comes home, which, having gone downtown, done a bit of shopping and this, that, it, you know, is often like three o'clock in the afternoon. Well, in winter time, you know, it's sort of starting to get dark then, so any growing that the plants would have done would have been done in cold temperatures in the winter time. So they never did that well. Um, I mean, they're all down here now. I, my temperatures don't go down anywhere near as low in the house in the winter. Um, because obviously I'm here and the house gets heated every day to keep me warm and um, as a consequence there's residual heat overnight to keep the plants you know, at a reasonable temperature so they're, they're growing better now which is why that one's recovering. Uh, this one's got some aerial roots so I can pour some water over without getting it in the crown of the plant. Um, and this is the last one of the ones on the window sill. This is just a no spike. Hang on, he says. Coming around the other side. No, it's a root. <laughs> so there's a couple of new roots coming out. But uh, um, again, if it's a miniature, you know, if it's a small fowl, it will definitely be one of Hannah's. So I think I've only got two left out of mine. Um, right, yeah, some coffee. Then we've got to do this beastie on the window sill. And that obviously gets treated a bit differently. Firstly because of its, uh, well mainly because of the way it's potted. <laughs> now it has a huge rock on it to keep it steady and offset, counterbalance, the spike. Now that's what happens if you don't use directional light. You get all your blooms and your plant hanging off the same side of your pot in this case. Well, how on earth is that ever going to stand upright? It's just not going to happen, hence the rock. Um, right, now the plant itself has, has got a good root system in this jar with no drainage whatsoever. And um, once it's finished blooming, I will repot it and I will set it a little more upright. Because although this is, this is how Phalaenopsis grow, if this was hanging off the, a tree as an epiphyte, that's what it would look like. That's how they grow. It's us that stick them in a pot and get them to grow upright for convenience. But this has got a nice new leaf coming. So um, it's sort of got some active growth going on. There's some active root tips down in the jar. <laughs> now when I come to repot this, I'm gonna to have to break this glass um, carefully, obviously. Don't shards of glass in the media. 
and then we'll shake out as much as we can and get it in a much bigger pot and try and set it a little more upright. But I'm not doing anything with it while it's still in bloom. Um, it's a nice splash of colour out here in the in the growing room. Uh, sorry, in the kitchen on the windowsill. Get there in a minute. Right, let's get me coffee out of the way, or I should get dribbles in there. And what I do with this is exactly the same as my son used to do, apart from the time. Now he used to fill it up with water and or feed, whatever. So it's just some bark fell out, so I'm just putting it back in. But he used to leave it to soak for about half an hour, whereas I don't. It gets plenty wet enough in that amount of time. So I fill the jar with water, carefully hold my hand over it, and tip it all out. And give it a chance to drain. And that's it. That's what it gets. And then it gets carefully put back where it was with its rock. <laughs> put in a, in a pot that also gets set at an angle. It's quite convoluted to uh, get this to stay put and not tip over. So we've got our rock, we've got our pot up at a slight angle and then we make sure we turn it around so that we can see the blooms. And unlike last time when I watered the Phalaenopsis, we won't miss the little cutie hiding up here that's not on the windowsill. Got forgotten last time. <laughs> uh, it's another miniature, so it'll be another one of Hannah's. But th this is a real little cutie, this one with the white blooms. The hint of yellow in the centre and a very, very subtle hint of pink, which is the, it's on the rear and it shows through, um, but only in when it's, there's enough light around. It's sort of... Uh, you sort of nearly see through the blooms to that pink stripe on the back. But lovely little bloom. It's, um, it's got a little side growth on here, a little plantlet growing out of the side. But um, it's lost its crown, that little plant. So I don't know what's going to happen with that. We shall see. But yeah, that one, because it lives up there, um, <laughs> got completely forgotten last time. So it'll be gasping. But this one hasn't got many roots in the pot at all. It's got a couple of new ones now that might branch, which would be good, but it hasn't got a lot of roots. So there's, a, there's an aerial root here. You can watch me do it because it'll probably snap. Because it's curled over and it's only a fraction away from the side of the pot, I'm gonna see if I can tuck it in like that which we've successfully done. So that will now grow down in the pot. Excellent. So that's another root in the media that wasn't there before. Anyway, as I said, that one nearly got forgotten last time. Put him back up there where he goes. And uh, that's the Phalaenopsis. Then all I do now is that as I put them back on the windowsill, I'll empty their trays, put them back on the windowsill and position them again. And then, um, clear up the drips and job done basically. So that's how I water the um, Phalaenopsis. It's all done in the kitchen and we've had a look at the plants as we've watered them. So uh, something a bit different, you know, not in the grow room. And I'm hoping now to get out in the garden and I'll explain this on the Orchid channel. Um, I will be doing a video of what I do in the garden today. I'm not going to say what it is, but it's quite a big job. Um, it will require machinery and um, I will film it obviously but it will be filmed for the garden channel so it will be put to one side it won't actually be shown until the gardening channel catches up which you know it, it could be the end of September into October before we actually catch up if you see what I mean um, although we're getting there um, the latest video on the garden channel now um, is in midwinter um, and there aren't many more in winter when we get to spring, when we start looking at Carol's plants arriving and starting to plant up garden tubs and that piece of border that I've got. So on the gardening channel, we're not far away from getting to that point. 
which will make it a... I'm, I suppose the heavy work that I'm doing, cutting all the stuff down, is interesting to a point. But it'd be nice to see some plants that will produce some colour as 2023 progresses. So that's how I'm going to work the gardening channel. Anything I do in the garden from now will get filmed and put to one side. Won't be lost, but I won't post it on the Orchid channel. And if, you keep, if you're keeping pace with the gardening channel, thanks a lot. If you haven't gone over there and subscribed yet, it would be nice if you did that. And if you're not subscribed here, it would be nice if you did that too. Anywhere you go, don't forget to subscribe and do the thumbs up. <laughs> Unless you really don't like the channel, then it's just nice to do that. Um, helps all the channels that you watch. It's all good stuff. And um, as far as my gardening channel is concerned, I've got a bonsai channel and an orchid channel. And at the moment on my orchid channel, my laptop is playing the playlist of the gardening channel to bump those watch hours up. I'm not in there watching it, but YouTube doesn't know. And the laptop's on anyway during the day, so I'm just letting the playlist run. So I'm clocking up those watch hours. Slowly but surely we're clicking, clocking them up. And it is slowly but surely. I forget where we are now. I think we're up to about heading towards 200, something like that. So, so just the 2,800 to go. <laughs> it's going to take a while. Anyway, back to the Orchid channel. I digress which is easy to do when you're running three channels, obviously. And um, <clears throat> I'll see you next time. Thanks for dropping by.